Hello everyone. Oh, let's wait for the lorries to go past. <sighs> Living on a main road is a bit of a difficulty when you're trying to vlog. And there's traffic lights and lorries right outside the house. Hello, welcome to a new vlog. I hope you're having a lovely week. Yeah, I just came along to say I lost you. I lost this camera um, for about a day and a half, two days probably altogether. And I was really panicking. I knew you were in the house because I remembered when I last filmed anything. But I just couldn't find you anywhere. I had everything apart. I've been filming loads of stuff upstairs in my sort of dressing room, walk-in wardrobe area. You just got lost underneath some clothes, which I thought I'd already looked underneath. But anyway, I found you, which was great because I thought, I thought, yes, I can carry on now with my dress, which I couldn't really do without being able to film it because I'm filming obviously a video for making the dress. And then my sewing machine won't work. Look, this is what happens. Turn it on, pedal down, and I get that. Stop for safety purposes. So I've just been on the phone to Janome, first of all John Lewis, where I bought it from, and then with Janome, and so far the service from both places has been pretty good. And they're gonna come and collect it on Monday and fix it. Hopefully that'll get sorted quickly, but they did say seven till 10 days, and obviously then plus the postage time to post it back to me. That was a long time for me to go without sewing. The house is gonna be really clean by the end of next week. <laughs> Good morning, I'm off to HomeSense today. I'm not gonna do a separate video. I know my come shop with me around HomeSense videos are usually quite popular, but this time I'm not just browsing. I do have quite a long list of things I'm looking for, mainly for our new bathroom, which is quite exciting. So I just sort of wanna focus on what I need and thinking about things like that. But I will show you a little bit around of what's in the shop at the moment. So yeah, that's what's happening today. I hope you're having a nice week and I'll see you in a bit. And for once I'm driving on my own so I can put in Alanis Morissette and sing really loudly. <laughs> talk too much while I was out it was a little bit of a stressful day actually um, the one of the tires in the car just sort of disintegrated and uh, sort of fell apart basically and, uh, so that was a bit of a stress I someone pointed it out to me as I was driving in the wrong direction oh I hate I hate driving so much. I went the wrong way twice. The Imperial, it was the Imperial um, Shopping, what's it called? The Imperial Shopping Centre or something in Bristol and there's no signposts of, the, there's a massive roundabout with like 10 different turnings off. No signposts. So I went past it, ugh. It was a nightmare. <laughs> anyway, on one of my roundabouts that was going the wrong way, some guy beeped at me and said, you've got a puncture or something. Yeah, half the time I was there, I was going from one place to another to another. Like I went to, there was a B&M over there and there was the range over there. Neither had a foot pump. So I went to Argos. They were out of the double pump foot pumps, but they did have the single one. So I've got a cheapy crappy single one, which is all a waste of time. Anyway, honestly, the B&M over there is absolutely huge. It's like, a, it's like bigger than a Tesco's. It's, and it's with two stories. I said, I must have walked miles today looking for a foot pump. And it was a waste of time because it wasn't even, because I thought, well, maybe I could pump it up enough to get home, but. No, it was too dangerous. So I, after, so that was sort of stressing me out through the day anyway, while I was trying to shop and, and then the journey home was a nightmare because I was just going from one garage that I saw to another because no one had a tire that I needed. I didn't think there was a spare wheel in that car, but turns out there was. So at least the second garage I stopped at, swapped the wheel over because they didn't think I was going to make it home without the wheel just exploding or something so anyway rant over <laughs> i'll show you what i bought which was not very successful it's all all together been a bit of a crappy day plus i scraped chris's car so he's not happy with me at all right let's start with home sense my on my shopping list oh, i got all kinds of things which i normally see in home sense for example and we need a new kitchen bin our pedal has broken on ours normally i see like a choice of 20 different kitchen bins and 
there was about four and none of those were quite right. I also wanted a little uh, a little bin for the bathroom with the swing lid because I don't I think it's gonna have to go on a shelf. So a pedal bin is no good for that. And I couldn't find one of them. I was looking for a tall unit for the bathroom for storage, couldn't find one of them. Not the best day to be honest, but I'll show you anyway what I've got. This is something I was on the lookout for, which is a deep cooking pot saucepan type thing. I'm always over boiling our pasta because I do like to batch cook I do like to do at least two meals per cook because I hate cooking and so if I'm doing um, a meal for Jude and Rain at the same time then that's six portions yeah six portions might just get in there really I could do with another one bigger than this but I'm pleased with that that's a good find a copper basket and I don't know if my storeroom declutter has gone up yet but You'll see in that that I bought some copper baskets very similar to this from Tesco's. And this was uh, eight pounds, which is in line with the price of the ones from Tesco's, but this one's bigger. And I wanted just one big one to go on the top that will fit in our like travel flasks and travel mugs and things like that. So that's that, that's useful. I got another pair of secateurs. I always pick up secateurs when I'm in home sense because they're good value over there. And I am terrible at looking after them. I keep leaving them out and they go rusty or the spring goes rusty so I get blisters on my hands and constantly opening the handle up again because the spring has broken I'm gonna look after that better I will <laughs> and actually that's it from yeah it was only three things that's actually it from home sense no there were four things what was the other thing oh the rug that the cat is sitting on I'm gonna have to boot the cat off one moment sorry Rafiki I've actually bought a new rug for the living room it's a thin rug this one is more just just to lighten up the flooring and give it a bit more softness so I'm not sure whether I'm gonna layer this sort of next to the other rug side by side or put it the other end of the living room over the flagstones but I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna be filming a, a sort of of a living room refresh because I've got a few ideas of things I want to do in there so I'll be filming that soon so you'll see where this goes then and then while I was running around looking for a foot pump to pump up the tyre in the range I found oh I haven't given you prices are you interested in prices shall I quickly run through it the cooking pot was 25 pounds reduced from 38 the rug was 26 pounds and the secateurs were 12.99 which they do do much cheaper actually over there I've got a hell of a lot of brambles to get through so hopefully I'm paying for the better quality by going up a bit in the price so in um in the range i bought this bath mat which was 6.99 it's a pebble effect i have to be honest i don't know how i feel about this because i bought it because it's memory foam i didn't know memory foam bath mats existed but oh my god it's soft so really nice soft material and so squishy that i that i got it for that reason and it's it just feels a bit 80s do you know what i mean and then while I was running around again looking for the foot pump, when I, in uh, B&M they had memory foam bath mats but looked like normal bath mats and I don't know if I preferred that but it was too late, I wasn't going back, I was absolutely exhausted by then. Do you like the purple effect? Maybe, maybe it's time to bring back purple effect. Let's do it, let's start a trend. Also in the range I picked up a replacement washing line of my whirly gig washing line outside and I think was that it? No! Hang on, I'll go and get it. Oh, I've just found another thing. I've just spotted another thing. Oh, you know, this is from Hobbycraft. I bought a tiny, a, a little cute uh, box frame. And this, I've been looking for a frame like this, this size, for so long. Jude bought us as a sort of family present for Christmas last year an actual coin that they used on Pirates of the Caribbean from the film. And I've been looking for something to display it in. So now I've got this cute little box frame, put some a treasure map paper or something in the back. That's that, it's just a little thing. I think that was 99p. Might have been about two pounds actually. And then this big thing, <sighs> let me show you. Artwork is one of those things we are rubbish at in our home because we can just never decide on something that we like. We never completely agree. And in the end, we never end up getting anything. We've got a little bit better lately. We've started buying some things that we see, some pictures when we're, when we're on holiday and you see those street sellers with their art. Half the time it's painted by numbers, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, my point is we're getting better at buying art. And I did it, I just bought it. I quite liked it, so I bought it. And it wasn't that expensive. It was 20, yeah, it was 22 pounds from the range. And 
it's big and bold and it's going in our bathroom. It's got a very sort of shiny coating on it. There's no glass or anything for condensation to build up behind. She, you know, it wasn't expensive, so if it does get ruined or go moldy, I expect it will still last us a few years before that happens. And by then we'll probably be ready to change it anyway. I don't think Chris was overly keen on it, but he doesn't hate it, which is, which means I can get away with putting it on the wall. Yeah, we needed something big and bold for that room and I, I'm quite happy with it. Right, I need to hide that again from the dog slobber. He's already slobbered on the back of it and I've only been in the house like, God, it's half past seven, I need to go. I'm late for choir as, as usual. Yeah, I haven't been back long because of all the tire palaver. Luckily I had some leftovers I could eat for dinner and now I'm off out again. So, a bit of a hectic day actually and I am exhausted. And I don't deal with things like that easily because I'm always tired. If you know from watching my hypothyroid disease video, you'll know I'm just perpetually in a state of tiredness. So when anything like that goes wrong like it has done today I, it just it just really affects me badly and it's rationally would be the word it always feels a lot worse than it is and when you look back it, it was a flat tire how many people get flat tire every day it, it's not the end of the world I got home eventually but well hopefully I'll enjoy a good sing-along at choir this evening and hopefully that will make the day a better day and I did come home with some nice things and now that I've been, because this is the problem, oh God, I'm rambling, I'm sorry. The problem is all those shops are so far away. It was, it's an hour and a half, it took me an hour and a half to get there and obviously ages to get back. I've been sort of putting off doing it because I don't, I don't like it. I don't like the drive. But now that I've been, I've seen what they've got. I've seen that they haven't got what I need. So now I can just go ahead and order it online. That is just getting louder and louder. The flush in that bathroom is so loud. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed seeing what, I, what bits and pieces I bought today and the little clip, so it wasn't much of home scent. Yeah, that's it for today. I'll see you again soon. Hello again. I think it's a couple of days later since I filmed, but there's a bit of a shopping theme going on, I think, in this vlog because this morning I popped into Shepton Mallet. I was going through the charity shops looking for mirrors for the bathroom. I want to do like a whole collet of wall with lots of little mirrors all over the place. I had no luck looking for mirrors. <laughs> but I did buy a couple of things. I do love a good charity shop rummage and I got this copper jug. Oh, it's looking a bit brassy in the screen, but it is quite a nice bright orangey copper. And that was £7.50. And I, I was really dithering about it because it's quite a unusual, not very modern at all, but I'm really trying to get that shabby cheeky look more in the house. And I know copper is not so fashionable anymore, but I still like it. And I've got a few copper bits around the kitchen. So I got this with a bunch of wildflowers in it. I've got cornflowers growing in the garden at the moment. I can go and collect some cow parsley from the field. And I think a big bunch of wildflowers in this jug would look really pretty. So. I did get that. There's a growing collection of really nice antique shops and vintage shops in Shepton Mallet. It really is, you know people say a town is up and coming and if you're moving there you're a little bit suspicious of that term. Well, I would say Shepton Mallet really is up and coming. There's like more and more vintage and antique shops are opening every time I go down there and it's busy, it's you know, bustling particularly on a, on market day, which is Fridays. Yeah, I would definitely give it a go if you're looking particularly for um, vintage stuff because you're gonna get prices, probably half what you'd get in a posh town, you know? Anyway, I bought this birdcage. I know it's probably not vintage. It's probably just from, I don't know, B&M and just got a bit rusty outside in the garden. But she only charged me five quid for it. And I really like the idea of having this with a plant. I don't know if I got a hook anywhere I can dangle it from, but get some ivy or, or something growing out of it. I really like that, so I got that. I really bought a flower pot, that was really nice. And, oh, and a really nice vintage book of Robin Hood stories. And I also got a skirt. It was um, reduced from two pounds to one pound. And it's just a very basic sort of circle skirt, really. Elasticated waist, so comfort, tick, and I really like this color, actually. So yeah. That was all, just thought I'd pop here and tell you about it. <laughs> right, I've got a job that I wanted to get done today, but my dinner is actually nearly finished cooking. So I'm probably not gonna manage to finish this right now. But I wanted to let you know what I was doing while it's still daylight and you could actually see. 
So I don't know if you've spotted it in the back of my vlogs, but I've got these two antique trunks. I'm having a bit of a sort around in this room. I'm moving them about, but I've really massively overloaded them, mostly with magazines. When we've got guests coming, like at Christmas, I've just grabbed all the bits of paper, all the bits of post that I haven't sorted through properly. I've just chucked in here. So now it is time to get this sorted. I wonder if I can use a cap tunnel to prop this open. I need one of those sticks like you get in, like for car boots. Okay, a little interlude while I look for something to prop this open. Okay, I've got the fire poker. So I thought you might also be interested in what magazines I get. I am a bit of a hoarder with magazines, but I thought you might want to see what it is I get and why I like hanging on to them. So I've got, in the moment, I'm going to start sorting them out. I've got, I don't like to throw these away. They cough. Let me just check. I think it's five pounds an issue. Six pounds. Six pounds for a magazine. I mean, that's ridiculous. I love the magazine, but that is so expensive. So it's not something I read once and throw away i am forgetful i do forget information and so it's nice to pick these up like a couple of years after i first bought them and it's like all new information for me again if you're not familiar with it the tagline is mindful ways to live your life well and it is it's lots they get lots of experts in and about different things there's always something about yoga in there there's lots of advice about just uh wellness learning to love yourself being happy just taking care of yourself and stuff like that and yeah, I really do recommend it, but it's a shame it costs so much money. Yeah, I've got quite a stash of these. I, I don't regularly, but I do occasionally buy homey magazines, and my favourite are Period Living and Country Homes and Interiors. Yeah, this is where my money goes. You know, you know, like, people add up how much money they spend on coffee. Well, I never buy coffee, but this is sort of my indulgence. So this one is Country Living Modern Rustic. And this is a £10 magazine, 12 pounds it's gone up, and it's just full of interiors that I just love. It's really my, really my cup of tea. Well, I've always been into, into interiors, but I don't always have the energy to actually carry my ideas through. But I'm determined to sort of get this house back up to date. We've lived here now for 11 years, and so everything re needs redoing that we did when we first moved here plus all the things that we didn't quite get around to doing when we first moved here. So yeah, interiors are on my mind. Creative Countryside, I've never actually bought this, but I won this on an Instagram competition. I've never won anything in my life, but I did a photograph that uh, won, I think it was probably because not many people entered, but yeah, I won four copies of last year's issues. Uh, this, oh, this is 12 pounds. I think that's actually gone up, but of course there's no advertising. There's no fluff to get in the way. It's just every single page is interesting or nice to look at, you know? Yeah, it's a nice magazine. I like it. Hello Fashion. Now this is one I can declutter because it's generally quite topical to the time. I love fashion magazines, but I hate all the adverts and celebrity gossip that I'm not interested in all, of, in all of that, but I am interested in fashions. It's just fashion and interviews with interesting people that are somehow fashion related, but not always. But yeah, this is how I keep up to date on trend. I might have one last flick through of these before I put them in the recycling. I think I've covered most magazines I get from this country, but when I go to America, which I haven't done yet this year, kind of feels weird. Last year I spent three months abroad, two weeks on holiday and two and a half months in America. Can you believe that? So it kind of feels, hello Loki, you joining in? It kind of feels a bit weird that I'm not, haven't been this year. Oh, it's slobbered down my back. You've just had a drink, haven't you? Gross. By the way, I've recently, I'm editing at the moment, so it's probably gone up by now, by the time you see this, but I've just done a video all about owning a Neapolitan Mastiff, if you're interested in that. But anyway, I was saying, in America, they have a, um, <laughs> Yes, Loki, I'm sitting on the floor. That means it's cuddle time, doesn't it? Oh, sit on my lap then. Gosh, it's distracted me. What was I saying? Yeah, there's a magazine company in America called Stampington. And oh my gosh, it is absolutely the best magazine company ever. It's really all about craft. And then they've got lots of homey things. And my two favourite magazines are Bella Grace and Artful Blogging. And they've just stopped doing artful blogging which makes me really sad because that feels like it sort of that means they think it's the death of 
vlogging is, is happening, which is really, really sad. They've also stopped doing my other favourite one, which was Belle Armoire, which is all about handmade clothing. But anyway, yeah, Bella Grace is a great one. So on their back cover, it says, we believe an ordinary life can be extraordinary. There is beauty in imperfection and that magic can be found in the everyday. Isn't that lovely? And that just sums up the whole magazine. It's really difficult to explain what it's like. It's just like people's life stories. Absolutely love it. And the photography that they choose to put in here is just beautiful. So yeah, these are definitely magazines I hold on to and keep and look through every now and then. And again, these are really expensive. These are $20, so about 16, 17 pounds. But again, no adverts, no crap in there. It's every page is interesting or beautiful. Another magazine I've got stashed in, away in here that I've sort of forgotten about actually is Faye magazine. Chris used to get me for Christmas a subscription to this magazine but then I discovered Bella Grace and I thought I'd better have that one as my subscription, yearly subscription instead. Yeah, because this one, although it's a lovely magazine and, 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 I love, and I love reading it, having a subscription was a bit pointless because I used to have to wait. They were very slow on delivery and they sell them in Glastonbury. Uh, so I thought that if I saw an issue that I wanted, I'd just go over there and buy it. <laughs> but I was featured in this one once. Yeah, oh, what a surprise to open straight on there. This was their Alice in Wonderland special issue and there's my Alice in Wonderland dress. So that's cool. So at least now I've got some of these sorted. The rest of it is post I need to deal with and some I need to find a home for them. And I do have a little bit of a pile that can be recycled. Another couple, very quick mention because my battery light's flashing and my dinner's ready. Jeanne Dark Living and Loving Bracanti. These are both beautiful interior magazines full of shabby chic inspiration and just beautiful pretty homes that i love looking at <laughs> so i've got a couple of these as well those have to get off ebay usually because never found a shop that sells them okay that's it for me for now hello everyone an exciting parcel came in the post today i thought i'd show it to you and uh, i have had a look in here already this isn't a big unboxing or anything oh my god it absolutely stinks of damp and I know what that smells like because our house smelt like it for about three years. Yes, yeah, so I've bought a bunch of lace. You may know I've been on a bit of a spending ban as far as fabric is concerned. However, I'm starting to slip a little bit. I've seen a couple of things I'm watching on eBay and I spied this box of lace and I want to incorporate lace a bit more into, into the clothes that I make for threads of a fairy tale. At the moment, I've got lots of silks and satins, but I would like to use a bit more lace. It's a really Really nice sort of romantic addition to a dress so this is it I thought I would just give you a little lace haul I know a lot of you are sewers as well so you might like to see what I've got and also um, one of the reasons why I've got it out today it's a nice sunny day it's a lovely day I hope you're having a lovely day whatever day this will go out on so I've got a little um, one of those washing nets for delicates because I need to unravel all of this and put it through the wash because like I said it stinks it's definitely been in the back of someone's loft and there is just no way I can use this and just airing it is not going to be enough so I'm going to put it all through the wash take it all off the packaging that it's wrapped around and dry it while, while the weather's nice so we'll start with this it's all very vintage looking labels on this stuff and very old tape holding it together. I need a rubbish bag. I'm hoping I can slide some of this off. That is pretty, isn't it? I could definitely incorporate that into something. Do I really have to unravel all of this? Yep, I think I do. Okay, change your plan slightly because otherwise you're gonna be bored stiff watching me unravel all of these. So I'll just show it to you and then I'll do the unraveling bit in my own time, listening to a podcast at the same time. So yeah, we've got maybe 25 meters of this which is nice similar sort of thing but with a floral design on the bottom and then we've got some cards of lace this is nice but this will be nice for a, a very nice vintage touch to my dresses i'm guessing this card has just been reused we've got some white some sort of peachy beigey color another beigey one well, that one's still got a good amount of elastic so useful to know if i need shoulder straps or something like that in my dresses a nice thick one i do i'm, I'm pleased with the colors i like these browns and sort of beigey colors it makes it, it helps 
to make the item have a sort of a sort of worn in fairy tale sort of look <laughs> and then we've got another peach one and I don't know if these labels are actually corresponding to the lace at all and then this is the last card obviously this has been cut in a few places <laughs> oh this is nice this one let me give you a close-up look really delicate made in england i wonder how many lace makers we still have in england so that's it for the big cards and then i've got a couple of packets of little bundles here that one that one and then we've got a big bag here and that one looks mouse chewed i recognize what mouse chewed looks like as well <laughs> who's playing music is that coming from the festival site? So sorry if you can hear that really annoying low level music sound in the background. Okay, well, that's it then. <laughs> Just a very quick little interlude to my, um, to my vlog here. Actually, a couple of other things have come in the post from eBay. Did I say I bought this from eBay? I can't remember, it was from eBay, um, which you might like to see. I'll go and grab them. I'm back. So these came yesterday. I haven't had a proper look at them yet, but I'll, uh, I'll quickly show these two books to you. It was actually our 11 year moving anniversary yesterday. So the whole house, it doesn't feel like, I can't believe we've lived here in Somerset this long, but the whole house really needs a refresh and it's really got me in the mood to think about our house again. So I've been listening to the podcast by Sophie Robinson from the Great Interior Design Challenge and Kate I can't remember her surname from Mad About the House blog. So if you listen to their podcast, which is called... What's the podcast called? The, the Great Indoors, that's what it's called. And the other day they interviewed Pearl Lowe. And I thought, oh, that, that sounds interesting. That sounds like my kind of style. So I looked her up on Instagram. I love her interior style. She's got a new book coming out in October. I've got to wait till October for it, but I can't wait because I love uh, just looking at pictures of really nice interiors. And I mean, the house has always been a bit rustic and a bit shabby chic in a way, but I'm gonna add a bit more faded grandeur sort of stuff. And anyway, gosh, I'm babbling along. This is a long introduction to what I'm about to show you, sorry. So anyway, I bought Pearl Lowe's old book, Pearl Lowe's Vintage Craft, Craft Project, Craft projects and styling advice for the modern vintage home and if you can see those colors i've, I've always liked colored interiors I, i'm not a white person or even a cream or beige person and everyone at the moment is painting their living rooms um hague blue aren't they i do still like a bright airy room i'm not sure about decorating our living room or our kitchen dark colors but i thought this was sort of quite a, a nice sort of compromise in style you know it doesn't have to be dark to be interesting you know so i'm gonna look through those craft projects and see if there's anything i want to try and the second book is called rediscovered treasures a new life for old objects and again i think it's a similar sort of thing where it's just got ideas to put crafty bits in your home more for the pictures really i like pictures like that <laughs> but you never know i'll look through and see if i can see anything that I want to try and if I do I will let you know and probably bring you along with me. Right I can sort out this lace and get it in the wash and I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everybody! I just thought I'd pop on here and say hello and goodbye at the same time because I'm going to end the vlog here today even though I haven't actually shown you anything today. I've been washing and dyeing some silks today. Look who's back! They came in today, but I won't be walking the dog in that field this year. <laughs> if you don't know why, have a look at the video for about this time last year. It's a little bit scary. Anyway, I'm just going to say goodbye. I'm off to Devon tomorrow with Chris, so I think there'll be a good vlog coming up soon. Uh, sorry this one has been a little bit shoppy, a little bit, um, look what I got. I don't, I'm not, I hope you don't take that as like showing off. I don't mean it to be. I just think you might be interested anyway i hope you enjoyed watching if you did please give this video a thumbs up if you're new here please hit subscribe and i'll see you again next time thanks for watching bye oh my